Okay, now it's recording. So thank you so much, Vanessa. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you so much for the mini introduction. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Vanessa, and I'm a student recruitment specialist, community engagement at the University of Calgary. Um, I am a recent graduate of the university myself and have graduated with a degree in community rehabilitation. And today I'm going to be providing you all with an overview of our institution on topics relating to our undergraduate programs, our institution and admissions as well. Okay, so before I dive into all things U Calgary, um, I did wanna take a moment here to formally acknowledge the traditional territories of the Treaty 7 region in Southern Alberta. Um, this includes the Blackfoot Confederacy, comprising the Siksika, the Bigani, and the Gainai First Nations, as well as the Sutina First Nations, and the Stony Nakoda, which includes the Chiniki, Bears Paw, and what is now known as the Good Stony First Nations. The city of Calgary, also known as Mokinsis, is also home to the Métis Nation of Alberta Region 3. So looking at the city of Calgary itself, there are a lot of amazing things about our city. Um, to start off, Calgary is named the first most livable city in all of North America, and this is due to a variety of different factors relating to our quality of life, employment opportunities, as well as lifestyle. Um, as you can see on this slide here, we are Canada's sunniest major city, and this is due to those warm Chinook winds that come over the Rocky Mountains in the winter time. Um, if you're someone that loves to try out new restaurants like me, we're also home to 17 of Canada's top 100 restaurants. And one thing I also like to point out is that we have the fastest growing tech market um, in Canada. And so if you are interested in sort of that tech field, this is a really great place to jumpstart your education and your career as well. Um, as you can see here, there's a lot of really great things to discover about our city. and the facts listed on this slide are just a few of many, so it really is a great place to live. Um, looking at UCalgary itself, we are a younger institution in Canada and was only founded in 1966. Um, although we are a younger institution, we are listed as Canada's entrepreneurial university. And one of the reasons why this is, is that we do have the number one um, ranking for the amount of startup creators that we have among all of the other research institutions in Canada. So a lot of startup companies have come out of um, U Calgary and graduated from here as well. Um, two fa facts that I really like to point out on this page is that we have a 94% after graduation employment rate and a 94% after graduation employment rate and a 95% undergraduate retention rate. And so with that 94% employment rate, this is really great because employers are noticing the um, that U Calgary graduates are having a lot of employable skills and that a lot of students are finding jobs after they graduate as well. Um, in terms of the retention rate, this is the rate of students that stay with us after studying in their first year with us. And this is really great as well because it shows the high satisfaction of our student population once they do join our institution. Um, another really great thing is that we are a research university and we have allocated about $504 million in sponsored research funding. And so there's gonna be a lot of great opportunities for you to engage in research during your undergraduate degree. And this also means that you are being taught by professors who are experts in their fields because they are the ones that are sort of jumpstarting and um, like spearheading these researches. So this is a cartoon version of our campus. Um, due to the recent building of our Hunter Student Commons and Matheson Hall buildings, we do not have sort of a live overview of our campus, although this does show a really great outline of our facilities and buildings. Um, for reference, to get from one end of campus to the opposite end, so from the Arts Parkade all the way to the Energy Environment Experiential Learning Building, it's about a 12 to 15 minute walk. And so that sort of so shows you that our campus isn't too small or too large. It's pretty mid-sized and walkable. Um, one thing I do like to point out as well is the LRT station to the top right over here. Um, as a student at UCalgary, included in your tuition is UPASS. And the UPASS does allow you to have unlimited access to Calgary's transit system. So you can travel all around the city. Um, 
an unlimited amount of times as long as you're a student with us. If you did want to see our campus a bit more, if you're located in Calgary or the Alberta area, I would encourage you to come in for an in-person campus tour. And for those that are international, we do have a virtual campus tour posted on our Choose You Calgary YouTube channel. And so I highly recommend that you check that out as well, because then you could see these buildings sort of live and what they look like in real life as well. So moving on just a little bit about the student experience, um, as much as we value our academics on our campus, we do want to ensure that our undergraduate students have a well rounded experience and engage in different student experiences as well. Um, the first one I like to point out is that the first event you're going to engage in as an undergraduate student is going to be orientation week. Um, this is the week where you're introduced to the campus community. Typically, you do activities with new incoming students from your program as well. And it's just a really great way to meet new people and sort of familiarize yourself with our campus. Um, if you like to play sports, we do have our Olympic Oval, which I will talk a little bit about later on, as well as intramural sports that you can get involved in. And we also have a lot of really good research opportunities for our students. And so if you look to the right middle, there's U Calgary Cares. And this specific program allows you Calgary students to come together to address different critical and social issues within our community. And then they all engage in doing some community sort of activities and volunteer work. And so right here, this student is helping to build homes, I believe in Costa Rica. Yeah, another way to really get involved on campus and meet new people is to find your club. And so we have over 300 clubs that you can choose from when you are at our institution. And these clubs range from recreational clubs to different cultural clubs, as well as academic clubs. And so there are a few examples listed here, such as the African Caribbean Students Association. We have the Vietnamese Student Association, Indian Student Association for cultural clubs. And then we also have for more academic clubs, like Women in Engineering. Um, every program also has their own club for its students. And yeah, recreational ones, a really popular one is the Ski and Snowboarding Club or maybe the Board Game Club as well. There's also a lot of ways to get active on our campus. Um, as a student, included in your fees and tuitions, you have access to all of the facilities on our campus. Um, all of these are going to be found in our kinesiology complex, but all students have free access to it. And as long as the facilities are open, you can go there whenever you would like. And so for the first one, we have an Olympic size swimming pool in our aquatic center. Here you could do, um, if you're on the swim team, this is where you're gonna do most of your practices. And if you're just a recreational swimmer, we do have public swim times as well. And so you're free to access that space during those times. We also have a two story tall, 10,000 square foot fitness center, which the first floor is going to be your traditional gym equipment with barbells, benches, and squat racks and those type of things. And then the top one is going to have some of that equipment, but it also has a full-size track if anyone does like to run or if they do track as well. Um, we also have our gymnastic center and our Olympic Oval, which was created for the 1988 Winter Olympics. And so it is a large indoor skating rink. And again, if you are like a competitive skater, you can do your practices there if you're on the team, or you can also do recreational skate times during um, when that is open to the public. We also have our racket and our outdoor anything as small as snowshoes or skates to anything as big as a kayak. Um, and you are able to get a discount as a student as well. So there's also a lot of student supports on campus. Um, we recognize the importance of ensuring that our students are successful and feel that they have support on our campus as well. And so four that I really like to highlight is our career services, our student success center, um, our student wellness services, as well as our student accessibility services. 
And so with career services, this is where students can go to get um, support with figuring out maybe what career they want after their degree. Um, our career services advisors also helps with things such as interview preparation, um, resume and cover letter building, and they also yeah have that one-on-one -on -one career advising. And so that's a really great resource to access if you're maybe still in the exploration phase of careers or you're looking for a job while you're a student. Um, another one is the Student Success Center. So this is where you can get more academic support. So our advisors here will provide writing support. And so in your um, degree, if you are writing a paper, you can actually bring in one to two pages of that paper before you submit it. And our advisors in our Student Success Center will help provide feedback and review your paper before you actually have to submit it. And once you get your marks back, they can help you sort of disseminate the feedback that your professor gave and will help you improve for your next paper as well. Um, they also provide academic advising as well as peer-led study sessions, which is also really great. Um, we also have our student wellness services, which provides anything relating to your mental and physical health. And so this is where you can find counseling supports, medical services, um, maybe like a registered dietitian, and they also have a few learning opportunities here as well. And the student accessibility services is for anyone that might require accommodations with things such as test taking or they have accessibility needs. This is where you will go to sort of receive support in those aspects. Okay, so here I sort of wanted to talk a little bit about the difference between different credentials. Um, at UCalgary, we do not have diplomas or applied degrees, but we do have undergraduate or bachelor's degrees, which are four-year degrees, where you have to complete a certain amount of credits in this. So today, the programs that I'm going to be talking about are all going to be those four-year undergraduate bachelor's degrees. Um, we do also offer master's degrees and doctoral degrees, although this is a higher level of learning, and you apply for these after you received your undergraduate degree. And this is also a different department. And so if you are interested in master's degrees or doctoral degrees, I would recommend that you reach out to our graduate studies team specifically. Um, the difference between a major, minor, and combined degree. So your major is going to be the program that you're most interested in and where the biggest chunk of your courses will revolve around. And so minors are going to be a way to enhance your degree and learn more about another subject area. And so you typically add on a minor in one of your upper years, and a lot of people add it in their second or third years, um, in addition to their major. So for example, you can have a major in community rehabilitation and a minor in psychology, and it's just a secondary subject of interest. And typically you only have to complete about 10 to 12 courses for your minor, whereas your major, you're going to complete more courses about that, and you're going to surround your learning around your major, mainly. On combined degrees, typically these are five years to complete, although at the end of the combined degree, you're going to get two degrees or parchments. And so one example that a lot of students take is a combined degree in business and kinesiology. And so by the end of that five years, they are going to have a well-rounded education for both and get a degree in business and a degree in kinesiology. And that's sort of what um, a combined degree is. So going more into the academics, I'm sort of going to talk very briefly about each faculty and what programs we have to offer. Um, we do have a lot of programs at UCalgary, so I won't go through them individually, but I'll sort of highlight the important parts about each faculty. So the first one is our School of Architecture, Planning and Landscape. And this faculty is home to our newest undergraduate program, which is the Bachelor of Design and City Innovation. And so this program really looks at the design of cities from a social perspective. Um, the program applies the concepts of design, global citizenship, entrepreneurship, and data science to address critical and social issues. And so this can include things such as climate change, sustainability, and inequality. And so in this program, you can choose a concentration in architecture or landscape architecture. So anyone interested in the fields of architecture 
or anyone wanting to do um, a master's degree in architecture to become a professional licensed architect, um, this would be a great program for you to look into and maybe apply to as well. The next faculty I want to talk about is our Faculty of Arts, which is our largest and most diverse faculty. And so I know a lot of people, when they hear arts, they think that um, they think of arts in the traditional sense of like painting and drawing. And although we do have our visual studies program for that, our Faculty of Arts um, encompasses much more, such as social science programs, fine arts programs, and as you can see here, a lot of other language and history programs as well. Um, some popular programs in this faculty that I have noticed are psychology, economics, and sociology. And so those are pretty popular programs within this faculty. Um, the next one is our working school of education. So anyone that has a passion for teaching and wants to become a teacher in Alberta, you might want to look into our Bachelor of Education. And so here, there's sort of two pathways you can take. We have the four-year route, which by the end of your four-year route, you're just going to receive a Bachelor's of Education in whichever teachable area you choose. And um, you could become certified to be a K-12 teacher in Alberta afterwards as well. But the five-year route, this is a combined degree. So you're still going to get a Bachelor's of Education. But if there's a secondary subject that you are interested in, you may want to look to the five-year combined degree portion. And yes, by the end of it, you'll get the Bachelor's of Education and another Bachelor's degree in whichever area you decide. Um, they are limited in what you can combine with education, but in this chart, it, sure does, it shows you what you can combine with that as well. And so both will allow you to become certified teachers at the K-12 level in Alberta, but it's sort of if you are just interested in education or education and another subject area. So next is our Haskins School of Business. Um, we have our Bachelor of Commerce, and under our Bachelor of Commerce, you can choose from one of 16 concentrations, which are listed on the left side of the slide here. Um, in the end, everyone is going to graduate with a degree in a Bachelor of Commerce, but in your concentration, um, it is a little bit more of a general business degree because we want to ensure that our students are well-rounded in not only their concentration but other areas as well once they graduate and this just allows our students to be um, more employable after they graduate. With our Schulich School of Engineering you will start off with a common first year where you will take general required foundational engineering courses and then in your second year you can choose one of eight concentrations which is also listed on this slide and then so your second, third, and fourth year are going to be more specialized to the concentration that you choose. Um, our Faculty of Kinesiology is a really unique program on our campus and one that is extremely popular because for the third year in a row, we were actually named the number one sports science school in all of North America. And so anyone that is interested in kinesiology or sports science, this would be a really great program to apply to in that case. Um, as you can see, there's a few different sort of like concentrations or specialties that you can choose from within kinesiology, but lots of great research coming out of this faculty. Um, a really fun fact I like to highlight is that we're the only institution in Canada that does concussion research for the NFL. And so that's always really cool. Um, we've also done a lot of product designs and have created a pair of David Beckham's cleats and I've done a lot of collaborations with companies such as Nike. Um, with our coming school of medicine, we have two programs here, which is community rehabilitation. Um, here, this is an interdisciplinary program that views the concept of disability from a social lens in the context of culture and politics rather than through medicine or psychology. And so this is a really research based course and you do get practicum experience in this as well. Um, with health sciences, I do want to point out that it's honors only. So this means that in your fourth year, you will be required to complete an honors thesis, um, which is a research study with um, one of your professors. And health sciences is a really research intensive program as well. And so that's something to keep in mind if you are considering this program potentially. Um, there are three concentrations to choose from in this as well, 
And one thing I did want to point out is that a lot of people think health sciences is a pre-med program, and we don't actually have any pre-med undergraduate programs on our campus. And so that's sort of like a common misconception that I wanted to just clear up here first. Um, with our faculty of nursing, of course, we have our bachelor of nursing. This is pretty straightforward. Um, anyone that wants to become a nurse would go into the bachelor of nursing. It is a four-year degree program, unless you are a degree holder or maybe a transfer student, then that four years might be more like two or three years. But we have a really great nursing simulation lab, which allows our students to apply and their practical skills to like a mock hospital setting with mannequins before they actually go into the real world and work with um, humans. And then we have our faculty of science, which we have 17 programs within our faculty of science. And this is where you can find more traditional programs such as chemistry, biology, neuroscience, physics. And we do have some honors only programs within the faculty of science. And so I would definitely check that out before you do apply. And just this little section at the end here, we wanted to include programs that do require previous post-secondary education. And so a lot of people are interested in law, medicine, or maybe veterinary medicine. And all of these are graduate studies level programs, and you do need undergraduate education beforehand. Um, but yeah, we always recommend if you're interested in medicine, maybe looking at a program within the Faculty of Science um, and law, maybe looking at something in the Faculty of Arts as well. Okay, so this is just a really quick overview of our application process. Um, I won't go through each step in detail, but as a general note, the first step would be to figure out what program you want to apply to and also search the admission requirements to ensure that you meet those requirements before you do apply. Um, our applications are open now and they do close on March 1st. So if you are interested in starting of September of 2023, I would encourage you to apply as soon as possible and before March 1st. So you can get any questions or concerns out of the way and you can get a decision earlier. Um, and then we would ask you to upload your transcripts and supporting documents by March 15th. And this includes that English language proficiency. And then continue to check your student center and hopefully you will get a offer and accept that offer by May 1st to start in September of 2023. Okay, I'm gonna briefly go over some admission requirements. And so this first slide is for anyone that is a high school student, or if you've only completed your education to the high school level, or have taken less than 12 units of post-secondary coursework, um, and are under the age of 21, then you would be a high school applicant. And in this case, we will look at five faculty-specific grade 12 courses, to calculate an admission average. And so we don't have, other than health sciences, um, dance, music, and visual studies, we do not have supplementary requirements for our applications and all other programs. We're just going to look at those five required courses and calculate an average based on that for admissions. And so with health sciences, there's four questions that you're required to answer as part of the application process just to ensure that you understand what the program is and to ensure that you're a good fit for the program and the program is a good fit for you. Um, of course, for dance and music, there's an audition component and then visual studies, you will need a portfolio and all students must demonstrate English language proficiency, which I'll talk a little bit about afterwards. Um, if you're considered a transfer student, that means you have completed more than 12 units of post-secondary coursework. And in this case, we will calculate your admissions GPA based on your most recent post-secondary work up to a maximum of 30 units. So typically um, that's about 10 post-secondary courses. And so sometimes we will ask you to submit your high school transcripts just to ensure you have prerequisite courses completed, but your GPA will be based on your post-secondary courses. And yeah, some programs may also have some post-secondary required courses, based on that, and it really varies with every program. And so after this presentation, I'm going to link our admissions requirements tool. And so everyone's free to go there to view the admission requirements for whichever route they fall into. 
adult students. Um, you can be considered an adult student if you're over 21 years of age, you are a Canadian citizen, permanent resident, or you have official refugee status. And if you've completed less than 12 units of that post-secondary coursework, you can be considered an adult student. And typically you aren't required to meet all of those five high school required courses, although you do have to present a satisfactory grade in English Language Arts 30-1, um, meet the, the competitive admission average for your program. And then if there are additional grade 12 level courses that are required, you would have to complete that as well, but it may not be five courses specifically. Okay, just a little bit about English language requirements. Um, there's a few ways that you can complete this requirement. And so the first one is if you have completed at least three years with English as your primary language of instruction um, in a Canadian, British, or American accredited high school, um, or you can meet the approved English grade. So for Alberta courses, that would be an 80% or higher in English language arts 30-1. Um, you can also present a acceptable English language test score. So very common ones that students do is Duolingo, IELTS, or TOEFL, or you can complete the academic communication certificate. And so Ryoko is going to be talking about that a little bit more later. And so I won't go into that one in too much details, but all students do have to prove English language proficiency. Um, there's lots of ways to fund your degree, and so one of the ways is to explore government student loans. What's listed on this slide is for um, Alberta students, and so if you are from another country internationally, you will have to sort of research a little bit more how student loans work within your country, and if you wanted to reach out to our student financial aid team, they can help you figure out the best way to fund for your degree afterwards. But for anyone that is um, in Alberta or you are a Canadian citizen or permanent resident, you can start applying for government student loans starting about mid-June for um, students beginning their studies in September. And so we do have a QR code here if you wanted to learn a little bit more about student loans and find the contact information for our student financial aid there. And yeah, it'll also tell you a little bit more about awards in that link as well. So lastly, I sort of wanted to go over some important dates. Um, I did touch on this a little bit during that application process slide, but just to reiterate, our applications close on March 1st at 11.59 p.m. And so if you are interested in applying for the incoming year, um, please apply as early as possible here and ensure you have your unofficial transcripts and supporting documents in by March 15th. And if anyone is interested in living on residence, we ask that um, to sort of be guaranteed a spot in residence in your first and second years to apply by May 1st. And then, yeah, hopefully you are accepted by May and can start registering for courses in early May as well. Here is the contact information for our national team. So if you are, depending on where you are residing, at the bottom here, there is the email addresses for all of our recruiters on our national team. So if you would like to take a photo there, I'm gonna give it a few seconds and you're free to jot down this information. On our next slide, this is our international student recruitment team. And so anyone that's not living in Canada and is residing in a different country, we do have a dedicated recruiter for your region. And so if you did have any questions regarding admissions, our undergraduate programs or the application process, I would encourage you to reach out to the international recruiter for your region. And it's listed on here. So feel free to take a photo as well and jot down this information. And yeah, lastly, this is my information. So if anyone does want to scan the QR code to learn more, or if you wanted to access any of our resources and social media, that is listed to the right. And so, yes, that concludes the presentation here. And I will hand it back to Ryoko.
So thank you so much for that uh, great presentation. I always like to uh, learn something new uh, that uh, through undergraduate pr uh, presentation. And then today I learned that uh, architecture actually has a four year degree now. I was yes. thinking like uh, before, like uh, only like a post or, or like a 60 credits already finished and then can move on or something. Yes. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a kind of new uh, area I learned and uh, a lot of like uh, information, um, some of them uh, specifically for undergraduate programs, but uh, uh, like a dinos, like, a, you know, sport team only for uh, credit students, but a lot of area actually like uh, uh, we cover in the English language program as well. So I'll just uh, take over the presentation from here okay. and then uh, introduce our program by using uh, my um, PowerPoint as well. So let me just uh, share here now. Okay. So I think uh, you see this one. And uh, today I'd like to talk about that, uh, sorry, a little bit. I want to delete that. Uh, yeah, um, could you see that the entire um, slide on your end? Yes, we can see it. Okay, perfect. So I'd like to today talk about that, uh, how our program work, um, works with that uh, undergraduate programs so that um, uh, you understand what you are getting into. So this one is a really good uh, quick snapshot of our program. So we have like a different length, uh, sometimes intensive program, but uh, one of our main uh, programs uh, are called semester program. So semester program is level one to six. And then after that, um, Vanessa talked about academic communication certificate, we call it ACC, uh, you can just uh, get into uh, after level six, or like a directly showing that uh, admission requirement, basically like a English test scores, and then you can get into ACC. And then um, in the slide, Vanessa talked about a academic communication certificate uh, grades, uh, B plus or better, you can just approve your English language proficiency towards your undergraduate program application. And then the slide, um, you saw that uh, the very bottom ACC uh, was the choice. And then they said that, but uh, unfortunately, um, nursing programs and uh, education programs are not accepting ACC uh, result. Uh, basically, like a uh, general, like a uh, English language proficiency requirements for undergraduate programs are uh, IELTS 6.5 academic. But uh, nursing is, I believe, like a 7.0 and uh, education is 8.0. So those ones are outside of that uh, ACC result. But uh, other than that, all like uh, programs Vanessa introduced, business, arts, science, engineering, those ones are good with ACC. And uh, when you study semester program, you don't have to actually have any test scores because on the first day or right now because of COVID, we're doing online placement test. So we will measure your uh, English language proficiency. So we will find the best match uh, level to start. So that's, you don't need to worry. And I just now want to jump to semester program. So this one is the kind of life cycle that you will study. Again, we have a placement test and then we find your matching level and you will study grammar, reading and writing, speaking and listening. And uh, we may evaluate like uh, um, the evaluation, uh, maybe I would say that's uh, not all level like a, uh, the same for all the courses. Uh, depending on where you are from and your education background, sometimes like a one part is very strong. Some part is not so much for uh, one part. So I was a good example. I'm Japanese and then I'm from Japan. And then I was very good at grammar. 
so so good at like uh, reading and writing and not so much at all for speaking and listening so um i would have been probably placed if i had taken that uh, placement test um grammar for example level four reading writing uh, reading reading and writing level four and uh, speaking and listening would have been probably level three so we just uh show and then give you the matching level for your strength and the weakness so that you're not going to waste your time to study uh, by, you know, being given that uh, entirely your level four. Rather than that, we say your grammar is level four, but a speaking and listening is level three or even five. And then we just have another in-class test to confirm your level because uh, for the rest of the term, 13 weeks, you will study uh, entirely one level towards the final exam week. And then you can see the arrow going back to day one. So if you repeat and then go up this um, ladder, if you get B plus or better for the final mark, like a final grade, we will promise that uh, you move up one level. So that's the system you go up. And then when you complete level six uh, with B plus or better, and if you wish to study ACC, uh, you can just uh, move on to ACC with that uh, um, final grades. And uh, as I mentioned, you don't have to have any test scores to uh, apply for our semester programs. However, if you have those test scores, we can guarantee that uh, you can start level five or six. And then this information is very important to those who would like to think about undergraduate application. So let's start with that, uh, what you need. So the major test scores, IELTS Academic and Duolingo, those two are the really like uh, major two right now. And IELTS Academic score, 5.0 for overall, and uh, also you have to have 5.0 in writing. And in other area, 4.5 is okay. And then you can be placed in level five, even before you have that uh, placement test. All students who even like a submit those test scores, you have to go through the placement test to be measured within our scale. However, Again, like if you have one of those test scores, you can just uh, pretty much guaranteed to start uh, at those levels. So Duolingo test score is overall 85 and 75 in production. And uh, level six, you can see that 5.5 .5, uh, line on the second bullet. And uh, Duolingo score for level six is 95 overall and uh, 85 in production. So why it is important is that uh, when you think about that uh, going up this ladder, if you can see that uh, you can start from level five, six, and an ACC, you can measure how long it takes to complete ACC. So that's the kind of reason why we start level five and then six to like allow students to submit the test scores and then being guaranteed to start. So that uh, you can measure that uh, when you would be able to potentially start like a, your undergraduate studies and then how long it takes to complete your ESL, uh, English study, basically like uh, towards your goal. So that's the kind of one thing like important. And uh, for that uh, academic communication certificate, uh, you will study that uh, five courses and uh, essentially course studies prepare for like English wise prepare for your university study and then again B plus or higher to uh, meet the requirement for English language proficiency except for education and nursing and uh, one criteria again to uh, meet the requirement for ACC is completion of level six with B plus or better in each course or uh, other those test scores. So going back to IELTS Academic, score is 6.0 overall and a minimum 6.0 in write writing as well. And the other scores 5.5 .5 is okay. And Duolingo English test score is 110 
for overall and production is 100. So please don't misunderstand that uh, undergraduate programs, uh, they're talking about IELTS 6.5 and they're talking about overall. But uh, we, as an English uh, program provider of, you know, we offer stronger result to get into that academic side. And the writing is strongly associated with your success in your um, undergraduate study. So that's why in our program level five, six and ACC, we require that uh, writing score uh, also uh, meet that uh, same level as that uh, overall score of that IELTS or like a production, um, you know, required certain level for Duolingo scores. And um, there are two ways that you can just uh, think about that, uh, how you can just uh, get into academic side. So academic side, as Vanessa mentioned, you have to meet as an, a new high school graduate or uh, within that range that you can apply as a um, high school graduate. Um, each program has like a five um, specific courses from your uh, grade 12 which is equivalent to most of the time last year of high school. If you have that, uh, uh, excuse me, um, you know, 12 year education system. So then those uh, courses, you have to meet the kind of minimum average uh, to be eligible to be considered uh, as a candidate and then accepted. So that one is you can just uh, go to undergraduate website um, and then you can go through, I'd like to study uh, business, and then I'd like to study this, and then you can just uh, go to specific of your country. Uh, that page will guide you what kind of scores you need, like uh, what kind of, sorry, uh, subject you need from your last year of high school, grade 12, and um, what kind of proof you need to be eligible to apply. So those ones are very important to meet. And then again, you can just uh, discuss with that uh, undergraduate uh, regional recruiters, um, cover your uh, home country to discuss like, uh, or figure out what's the kind of requirement and then how you can check like, uh, then those five courses average is actually like uh, um, high enough that uh, you can just apply for that uh, undergraduate program. But uh, one, uh, in any case, if you meet that uh, academic side of that uh, um, requirement, and then the only part you're missing is English language proficiency, um, depending on that uh, timing, you will get that uh, conditional admission letter from that uh, undergraduate program. So one way right now, if you apply for the start uh, 2023, this year fall, and then you have high average of that uh, five courses, uh, you may be able to get that, uh, of course, like a, the judgment is left with the, that uh, admissions office, but you may be able to get that uh, conditional admission. Um, and then if you are in ACC, so that for this year, um, you can just uh, apply our program and then uh, you can just uh, show that uh, how you can just uh, complete and then meet your English language proficiency. And then they can consider that uh, conditional admission. So it might be a little bit uh, late for this year to consider like apply now uh, our program because of that uh, you know, study permit. But uh, this uh, um, sample table uh, shown on this um, uh, presentation is an extract from our uh, brochure. So talking about a little bit future as well. So if you have that uh, minimum English score to start, uh, to be able to start, I would say level five, and then students, you can apply for undergraduate program uh, starting fall this year, so this application cycle, and then upload ELP proof of registration. And then admission will grant for that uh, fall 2024. Um, 
on condition of successfully completing the ACC. So the application cycle is right now, but uh, um, you may be considered for that uh, 2024 fall start, uh, depending on that uh, your English level. So you have to have a minimum English level to be considered. And then also uh, separately, you have to meet the English, uh, sorry, academic requirement. And then uh, application uh, cycle for this year will close as Vanessa said, March 1st. And then even right now, to even after the closure of that application process for 2023 fall, uh, conditional admission to a degree program is granted. Again, if you meet the academic side requirement and in the, the only like a uh, um, requirement missing is English language proficiency. And then I'm emphasizing English language proficiency is the you know, only part missing because all of those five courses um, for that uh, program to be evaluated that uh, the average includes English, uh, but uh, in, that English is actually the grade 12 English. Uh, so that, uh, that is a separate like English, like a study and then separate from English language proficiency. So please don't confuse those two, English as a subject to be submitted for that uh, one of the five courses versus that uh, English language proficiency. English language proficiency, uh, sorry, English language program is the good pathway option for that uh, English um, language proficiency to meet. And then uh, when you just uh, get that uh, conditional admission and you have a letter of acceptance from us, and then you can apply for a study permit in order to start our study in ESL, depending on where you can start, uh, level minimum five, six and an ACC, and you are given one year to complete in order to start fall 2024. So that's the kind of new area that uh, we started this year. And then you can just uh, plan your future study so that uh, um, it's really like a more door has been opened to you uh, to consider that uh, your future study going through that uh, English language program. So I'll just uh, stop my presentation here recording. So that's